Hey guys! Welcome to the adventures. So we've done a lot of lifestyle kind of videos and we don't want to just do lifestyle but we also want to help you be better drivers and be more, more knowledgeable and safer drivers and things like that. So we figured we'd touch base back on our truck. We're gonna we're not gonna say too many nice things. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody likes to sit on the road so we're gonna give you a few tips of things you can look for today mm -hmm. and um, to help keep your truck happy keep you happy and keep you moving and making the money because we know if the wheels ain't turning you ain't earning uh -uh. so you guys know um, maybe some of you missed it but our truck did end up having to have an in-frame rebuild and it's really important after you have major work done on your truck that you are aware and checking for things um, still after the rebuild. I mean, you can't get everything perfectly right the first time. It was pretty big work. Yeah, so two times it's it's been back since the rebuild uh, to get checked up, checked out, and uh, We'll in. just say it's not left to sit and then we'll leave it at that. That's right. All right, guys, so let's get under the hood and see what you could be looking for. So a couple things to look for. Um, your coolant system should not be cloudy. It should not have a dark tint to it. If, if it does, that means that something is getting mixed in with the coolant. Um, you want it to be nice and clear like this. You don't have any dark tint to the inside of the coolant tank. If that's happening, then you it's usually one of three things. Either your, your air compressor is leaking into your coolant system because it has oil that goes through it. Your head gasket could be leaking or it could be your EGR valve because all those are oil cooled and when you have high pressure oil next to a lower pressure coolant oil being about 50 pounds coolant being about 15 pounds the coolant uh, at lower pressure the oil will push its way into the cooling system and that's what gives you that dark cloudy look to your tank so when we got it back to the shop we noticed a, a squealing noise and I don't know if it was just from the truck sitting two weeks because it didn't do it when it went in. Maybe the, the idler pulley got hit, bent, something, I don't know. Um, but it just sounded like the mice were in there working extra hard and getting that, getting that wheel squealing. So um, we, they, we had them change that and there's the idler pulley right here that was replaced that was making a squealing sound. So during your pre-trip inspection, just look for any leaks, drips, any puddles that may be underneath your truck. We're actually doing pretty good right now. Uh, it's got 235,000 miles on it, and uh, uh, I'm going to try not to say anything celebratory about it, but it's not left to sitting again, like I said earlier. Ladies, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. After all, you wanted to be a truck driver, so really go be a truck driver. Pop the hood, look at things, educate yourself, and make sure you know what's going on with your truck. So I do a free trip just like he does, but really learn the truck so you can be a knowledgeable driver. But guys, we hope this is helpful for you and gives you a little bit more idea what to look for even after the truck's been in the shop. They're people just like we are and mistakes can happen. And you know, work is work and sometimes it's gotta be fine too. So be graceful, be patient, and all those things is tough in trucking. Most importantly, be safe and enjoy the adventures. Bye!